Climate change is the biggest global environmental problem. But some people exaggerate. They, they turn up the volume to 11. They think that if we just say that it's a devastating thing, that that will encourage people to act. And I don't think that's actually working. I think shouting louder hasn't been effective. People want to work on problems they think they can fix. They don't want to work on problems just because they think they're bad. The way David Keith sees it, the fix will happen up there, in the sky. Keith's a Harvard professor, a world-renowned climate scientist, an outdoorsman. And I've come to Calgary to meet him because he says the planet has to be cooled, and he knows the way to do it. Something called solar geoengineering. Solar geoengineering rests on a simple idea. We could offset some of the risk of the accumulating carbon in the atmosphere by making the Earth a little bit more reflective so that it absorbs a little bit less sunlight. And humans could do this deliberately, for example, by putting reflective aerosols, sulfates, or maybe even diamond dust in the stratosphere, where they would reflect away a little bit of sunlight the way a very thin cloud does. Picture it. Particles shot up into the atmosphere. They make clouds. The clouds shield us from the sun, cooling the Earth. Keith explains that this already happens when volcanoes erupt, but volcanoes are a little less controversial. What is notable is that although there are lots of people who behind closed doors in the scientific world and political world will say we should take it seriously, it's so controversial that there's basically no serious research programs by big governments. Why is this idea so controversial? It's controversial because people are terrified that if we even talk about it, that, that efforts to, to cut emissions, do the hard work of cutting emissions, will weaken. This is the psychological dilemma of solar geoengineering. If we perfect it, then we're off the hook, right? Is this idea a silver bullet? Is no, it's at? not a silver bullet, because you need both. We need to cut emissions using things like solar power and nuclear power and conservation, and we need to be able to do this thing, to do solar geoengineering, if, if, it, if the time looks right. But for some people, there will never be a right time to do this. After all, isn't controlling the Earth's climate playing God? We are already controlling the climate by putting all this carbon in. Right now, we're treating the atmosphere like a trash dump. We're throwing our carbon pollution into the atmosphere. And we need to think about, we need to think about a global responsibility to the natural environment. And I think that being deliberate about how we manage the climate may in fact be an ethical and sensible part of that. Maybe Keith's right, that if we controlled the climate, we'd care a little more about it. Then again, maybe he isn't. That's the thing, there are so many unanswered questions about solar geoengineering. Will it even work? Who controls the thermostat? What about side effects? In the end, the questions are Keith's point. Everybody who's a professional on climate knows this in principle could be done. And they assume that if things get really bad, we'll do it. But then we'll be doing it with something that's completely untested. And so what you want to do is bring it out in the open so we can think about how we manage it and figure out how to do it better. We're not going to make better decisions about this technology if we pretend it doesn't exist. When you look to the future, what's your hope? I think an exciting thing about the combination of emissions cuts and solar geoengineering is you can actually talk about making the problem better. And I think it's possible that that positive vision of kind of restoring the climate to the pre-industrial we started with could actually motivate more people to, to do the hard work of cutting emissions. And if so, it's a win-win. Does that mean you want to do this? I, I want to do it because I don't want, want the planet to be wrecked by climate change. Is that a bad thing? Because this would actually protect real human beings who are going to suffer and die in heat, heat waves in South India or protect the high Arctic that's going to melt away. So why wouldn't people vote to actually have less global warming, to have less risk? If this ever happens, that we shoot a whole bunch of particles into the earth, into yeah, the atmosphere, yeah, yeah. to cool it down. Yeah. What kind of day is that? Is that a sad day? Is that a failure? What is that? I think it depends entirely on how we do it. If it's done as an excuse so we don't cut emissions, then it's a terrible day. Do you think it's likely? I think it's likely we'll do it, but I hope we do it the right way, not the wrong way. Keith tells me that the technology exists, and theoretically, there's nothing to stop a country from doing solar geoengineering. Sound crazy? Maybe the craziest idea is to not think about it at all.
Nick Purden, CBC News, Calgary.